All right. Well, Sam, we are live on YouTube for the first time ever. Hey, guys, if you're just tuning in, I'm Eva Rupert. I'm here with Overland Expo, and this is a great experiment today. I'm here with my friend Sam Manicom, who is an author, adventurer, traveler, and just all-around extraordinary human being. And so he gets to be the guinea pig for this series of Overland Expo live interviews on YouTube. So if anybody's out there in internet land, feel free to ask me questions. I may or may not see them, but I'll do my very best. Um, and without further ado, Sam, who needs no introduction in the world of adventure motorcycling, um, how are you? Well, Eva, for starters, I'm blushing with that sort of intro. You've got, I'm, I'm glad I'm sitting down. <laughs> Hi, Eva. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really good, thank you. Um, yeah, life is excellent in spite of all of the craziness that's going on. Absolutely. Where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Ed, which is a small town, a well, small city in um, the southwest of England. It's only really a city because it's got um, a cathedral and uh, um, UK cities are often denoted by the fact that they have a cathedral or not. But it's more like an overgrown town um, than an apartment which is in the top of an old Victorian house. You can see um, onto the city. It's a nice place to be. It's so good. It's nice to be able to have that open space around you during a, a lockdown quarantine period like this. I just feel like it keeps sure. you grounded, especially as a traveler. Um, you know, being able to at least get a little bit of fresh air is so key. No, that's absolutely right. So we're very lucky because we're in the top of this um, old Victorian house. So we're right up on the roof. So most of our apartment is sloping roof and we've got um, windows setting into that. So it's just a huge tent, which suits me. Wonderful. I'm so excited, Sam. We do have comments coming in. Somebody is on the other side. Uh, Bubba Tim, greetings from South Florida. This is great. That is so great. Thank you guys so much. I'm so happy to see that pop up in the comment section. I'm using this new piece of software today, so I'm very nervous technology-wise. So that is great. Um, Sam, how have you been keeping yourself busy in the last few months? Typically by now, we would have crossed paths at least once, if not twice in 2020 yep. but that is not the case right now so how have you been keeping your time well when everything started going pear-shaped a few months back um you know life was changing quite dramatically and i, I think but hang, hang on a minute not this is a negative it is a positive what sorts of things that i've been to do but haven't got around to doing and one of the key things i've been up to is photographs now, you're not old enough to remember taking photos on film, but when I've done a lot of my big trips, there's all taken on, on film. And of course, doing that 36 shot roll of film, you don't know where it's being stored, the time, you know, if it's been transported at the right temperature. Um, and then you're rattling it around in the, in the, the pannier for, um, for ages before you can get it developed. If I developed a 36 film, I might be able to get to do it. The right but of course, digital. Birgit and I did a one-month-long trip uh, riding one two five cc automatic scooters in Vietnam. But I took five photos. I've never rounds to sit and go all photos and a stack of stuff where you know for a moment not quite in focus or whatever else it is it's been an absolute buzz going through photos and we did it uh, to norway and norway has one of the most photogenic places in the world and again loads of photos and i'd been through and i picked out the ones that i really, really liked, but i hadn't properly been through the rest I mean, cheapers why didn't i pick this out the first time so of course they've been moved across to the right there's one that pops into my mind straight away. A lot of often do in North and but whenever we saw it, just hanging a left or hang, just seeing where that takes us. So resting the hill and just drop to the valley where Birgit is. And I thought, why didn't I dig that photo out before? Don't know about when I tell you, I'm normally focusing on something in particular i guess we all know the object isn't that um but i often don't look at what's in the back and again one of the beauties of digital is that you have that 
never had noticed. So I've been having some real fun um, visiting places that I had in my camera. Um, that is so good. So do you ever shoot film anymore? Never. All digital. I liked film. Uh, my partner, she taught an awful lot about um, um, photography. Um, she's quite, quite good at it. But it was expensive. The cost fell to develop. And of course, on trips, then you're faced with do you count from the bit we were uh, in one envelope and send a photo to us. So at least one was going to make it. Right. There are many more opportunities. And I know the film purists that you don't get the same de depth of photo and you I'm able to take a lot more photographs, um, and I can. I I about all of the pixels that are the ecological disaster. <laughs> oh, save the pixels. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I just got a message that your audio might be a little spotty, so I'm gonna just turn you up just a little bit, Sam. Okay. I'll do three, four, five. Six six nine ten that's perfect that's I love it. thanks for some posting in on that yeah it's wonderful so we've got some hellos we've got some hellos from north carolina somebody named paul moore and tom horner and jessica kirchner of course are all tuning in and watching which is just lovely so um Fantastic. Yeah, we've got a nice, nice little posse for our maiden voyage here. You know, Sam, one of the things that I was thinking about when I knew we were going to talk today is I was wondering what the relationship is between your photos and your writing. You're so well known for your books and they're so lovely. And I was wondering what that interplay was or how your words affect your photos or vice versa. Eva, well, you've asked me a question. Never been asked. Such excuse me a lot. Writing. Uh, I do that because I. Th the full depth story uh, so, so that one's quite just back through the photos that helps absolutely a lot, absolutely lot too. Well, you know i self-servingly want to delve more into your writing process during this whole you know the 2020 shift of you know being in the live events production world um in the live events production world, we are just kind of peeling back because we can't get together in the same way. So it's been a lot of time for creativity and reflection and writing and making images and videos and all that kind of stuff. So I've been doing a lot of writing. And so I wanted to kind of lean into some of your process because I know at Overland Expo, you often teach classes about travel writing and help inspire other people to you know, hone their stories. And so maybe we can dig into some of that next. Yeah, a lot easier it was when I started. Uh, back when I started, if you published, you were a title, a vanity publisher. But people were mostly writing books, expected to go on and produce um, bookshops and and sales. Um, it's become that to produce a book. The, the trouble is you get books that actually have good stories, but, but aren't necessarily one. Now, maybe that because they're not expressed, they only start to know the real need. Now, I don't think books should get as an editor's skills 
involved. Um, but, but yeah, there are some people who are in that make that person to be reading the book. The first time, that's what's going on with a reader. Something you would in mind, and there are times, for example, has come back to me. This is rubbish. Just take it out. Um, my list is pretty blunt. I, I, I like that. Get us not there through things. Um, he's right to me. Then that's because I haven't done. It. I'm going back. Why doesn't he think it should be in the story? And uh, if he's still saying to me, well, it's really got a place, then that means it's interrupting the flow of the story of to add to the overall um, sign the pictures and so on. Um, I spent all the time um, down uh, helping quite greatly, not only a chance to see all of these wonderful manuscripts. It's coming. I'm seeing some real happening. It's just, and that is of uh, being in the digital age because can you like um, Rand, for example, and they might get 10,000 a year to Down there, the nose is at you. Interesting. Oh, that's so cool. All of the writers that you're working with now, do they fall into that sort of travel writer genre? Is that is that who you're connected with? Or are you okay? Very cool. I would absolutely <laughs> be a romantic I love it. Isn't isn't Into Africa a romance novel? <laughs> I love it. So good. That is so good. Uh-oh, I'm getting some notifications that we are not that well connected. Hmm. Gosh, I wonder why. Let's see. Cuz I'm seeing you and are you hearing me just fine, Sam? Um big thanks I'm hearing you just fine too. Um, I wonder, well, you know, big thanks I'm to everybody out there in the internet land for hanging out with us despite any sort of technical glitches and challenges. Um, I love that. You know, I think somebody's saying that you're breaking up a bit and then we're, we're kind of cutting in and out. Um, I wonder what connection is causing the problem. Let's see. I know, I'm looking pretty solid too. Well, the long and short of it is all of this is getting recorded on my computer right now. So even if we don't directly save the live chat that we've done, I can post the recording up on YouTube and it will go up on Instagram as well. Um, gosh, so I'm assuming you've been continuing to write, Sam, this whole time that you're just, a... oh, Sam is breaking up terribly. Oh no, I don't know how to save him. <laughs> Let's see. Sure. Let me, what if, what if we go full Sam? Sam, give us a little audio test. Thanks for the heads up on that, Tom. Say, how about something like Overland Expo? Everybody. Oh, you know what? I don't know what this is. Somewhere along the lines, 
we have a spotty connection going on. Hmm. Thanks so much, Bubba Tim. Thanks, Tom Horner. Thanks, you guys, so much for your heads up on this. Thanks for hanging out for the maiden voyage of this. And Sam, you are a little frozen. All right, that sounds great. Interesting. All right, so we're just gonna pause on Sam for a second and while he goes and checks what's going on in the other room, um, I hope that you guys are all planning on tuning in for Overland Expo Virtual, our second virtual event of the year, which is super exciting. Um, August 8th, it is a whole day of classes and presentations. This is like the advertising moment. Sam, your mustache is full frame right now. <laughs> Yes, you're fully away. frozen. <laughs> That's great. Uh, let's see. Hey, anybody who's out there, is it, let's get a little audio check from Sam. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Let me try switching over to, ooh, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't want to lose that connection. Let's see. Well, you know what, Sam? I think what we're going to do is we are just going to carry on with this conversation because all of this audio is being recorded and we'll be able to make a video out of it one way or the other. So it okay. kind of defeats the live purpose, but, you know, um, you know, maybe we'll just, we'll just start wrapping it up because, you know, I really don't want to end this conversation without talking about the R80GS because... Some of us are turning 40 uh, this year. Um, some of us are turning 40 this year, myself and BMW's original Galandestrasse uh, motorcycle, which is so exciting. Um, Sam, what was... 40 years of the GS. It's quite phenomenal, isn't it? Think about um, how many people's lives... The openings, the skills people have learned. It's quite a fantastic cycle, isn't it? And for sure, it would be completely different had I been guided by two guys in the direction of a GS. I want to go to that bar. <laughs> Oh, that's that's great. So did you, when you set off on your first trip, did you have a 1980 R80? Okay. Um, weeks. Because this is huge. <laughs> that bike was so and adaptable um, <laughs> I love it that is so good yeah 40 years of adventure and looking forward to 40 more you the last time you came through southern Arizona you were on an 800 right it's an F800 some um, luck so people would lend absolutely fantastic always hundred and it was perfect for the sort of things that the ride was doing Um, overlap. Yeah. I, I, <gasps> no. Thinking of, I'm going down. I can think. I think I wasn't me at all.
spark another right. somebody else's bike. No, I'm gonna do that. But wasn't it amazing that all of them were lending me their bike? Oh, I love it. What, I mean, doesn't that just speak to the spirit of this community that we're a part of? It is just such, I mean, it, you know, it just almost brings tears to my eyes because I miss everybody so much. It's like such an incredible community, the Overland community, the adventure motorcycle community. It's, it's just wonderful. Involved with. Particularly noticing during time is how, how positive are being the motor opportunities to be involved with. I think so as well. Yeah, it's it's you know interesting times but like you know any travel or adventure that we have right there are times when it's smooth cruising and there's times when it's a little rocky so what i mean i think that's really what separates like the passionate travelers from everybody else is that willingness to just roll with the punches and be flexible and adaptable and you know stay fresh and stay on your toes and i mean you are such an inspiration for that in so many ways with your books and your teachings and and all that so thank you so much for <laughs> i know <laughs> ah, i love it i i was just writing a little article about my new f850 gs and you know one of my main criteria for a motorcycle is that it can fall over and then quickly bounce right back up <laughs> because you know they just they only have two wheels they just tip over all the time it's the darndest thing <laughs> In situations, mm -hmm. expo with um, bike in bike, and um, I'm sure that slips had a lesson. <laughs> should have should have called Bill before you picked that bike up. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I love it. That's awesome. Anything else, Sam, that you would like to share with the big world before we before we sign off and I get to editing this? In time doing is going through all of my travel and I've had the habit of using it. Um, some st stories that go with land that I've been. Because it's heavy and it's big, and I don't that size, but it's got memories in the time. And yeah, I've just bought my pen. Congratulations. Um, shit. What did you say? Hang on a minute. Saying I that ticks all of the boxes. Absolutely. You know, I think it's so funny, and I, I think you are like me and a lot of us in this way, is that we get this sort of sentimental attachment to our camping kit. You know, it's like when you pull up to your campsite and you put down the same piece of tarp and the same sleeping pad, like there's just this familiarity to it. And so I feel like I don't know, sometimes getting a new piece of gear is a little, I don't know, it, it, it takes a little adjusting to, or like, I don't know, I always feel like I have to like suck it up a little bit if I know that it's actually time to replace the sleeping bag. Like I will stay warmer, I'll stay drier, I'll be happier if I'm not toting around the same crusty old flat bag, so. Yeah, that's exactly right, isn't it? And I th think, um, a lot of the the uh, camping equipment companies and so on while we're going through um, these times um, for us to be doing that and to be having a look at the, what these companies have got to offer because virtually everybody's had to 
um, you know, internet sales and so on. So by us doing our analysis, we can be helping them too. That's another way that we're the community working together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Doing what we can across the board. Um, right. What, what, um, what, what's the new tent that you got? What did you it's a, a Robin. It's a tent. It's not because an I off, but just because we like a bit of inside. Um, and like I said, you know, your tent is your house, isn't it? Mm -hmm. When I set off on the big trip, I had um, uh, a very small tent. <laughs> yeah. What a ridiculous world it was. There was no through drag on rainy that packed down really small. Because the whole in space, you need your own. It's uh, excellent. That's so good. Well, I can't wait for you to bring it across the Atlantic, bring it across the Atlantic with you. Um, so we get to see you over here in the US sometime soon, fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. USA has become yeah. yeah, you second. spend a good amount of time over here. You guys, when, um, when it's not locked down, you can very often find Sam scooting around the US giving wonderful presentations and, um, lectures and slideshows and discussions and classes and things like that at Overland Expo, but at all different motorcycle shops across the country. So it's, it's wonderful. Um, Sam, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to speak with me today. This is great. It's really good to have a And um, yeah, I'm difficult. I'm glad you yeah, absolutely. I figured you could roll with the punches with the best of them. So we'll see how this goes. I'm looking forward to looking back and watching it and hearing maybe from the from the YouTube perspective what everybody out there is hearing. So for everybody who has tuned in, you guys, thank you so much. You can find Sam right. Manicom on all of the social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Amazon.com in case you want to buy a book or download a Kindle. Is that your preferred? Where's your preferred method of book selling? For my for to people outside of the book Amazon, but they do worldwide deliver. Tree. I love that. Perfect. The book depository. Perfect. I'm going to hunt that down. I love it. Awesome. Sam, thank you so much. We've had some great people popping in. Tom Horner says hi. Uh, Ride Hard says hello from Delaware. We've had some nice folks swinging through. And so um, it's Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. Excellent. Sam, we'll hopefully see you soon. You take good care in the meantime, okay? Alrighty, bye-bye.